Good morning, gang. Happy Tuesday. My apologies for this video being so late, but having all sorts of fun this morning. It's my Wi-Fi wasn't working, and then I'm trying to upload this onto my uh, cell phone data plan to get the video up. And of course, that was slow, so they said clear the cache. And of course, when I cleared the cache, that cleared the video. And so I'm now re-recording this. It's just nothing like being seven o'clock in the morning now and I'm already three hours into trying to make a 10 minute video. You wonder how, when everybody talks about YouTubers, it's like, oh, this takes to, you know, you don't do anything. Yeah, right, okay. <laughs> I spent 10 hours a day doing this. Uh, all right, I wanna get into some more on the banking industry and I'm gonna tell you guys, please do not fall for the oh, this was just a blip in the system because, of course, now you're seeing the market up a little bit. You're seeing the stocks that tanked yesterday bouncing back a little bit. You're seeing gold and silver down a little bit, okay? That's just people coming in, picking up an opportunity for something that was oversold to buy and try to catch that bounce. You know, yeah, if you had the cojones to go in and buy First Republic Bank yesterday at the close and figured, hey, it'll bounce in the morning. You were actually right. You make yourself 10%. No problem. Okay. Could have been wrong, too. You know, the old saying in the market was never try to catch a falling knife. Uh, some people do it. Some people win. Some people things go down the next day, too. Uh, so, but what I want to get into is this is the beginning of this, guys. This is not the end. It wasn't, oh, gee, it's one day. It's just one little thing, and that's it. No. When you have damage control coming out of Washington like crazy on this and finger pointing all over the place, please do not listen to what Congress is saying, what Biden's saying, what the media is saying. They are gaslighting you beyond belief, okay? Y'all heard yesterday all the stories, Joe Biden coming out, Elizabeth Warren coming out. Oh, it's the regulations. It's all Trump's fault because they pulled back the regulations with uh, the banks and everything like that from Dodd-Frank. No, even Barney Frank, the one who's named after, you know, Chris Dodd and Barney Frank, that's who it was named after, said, no, this has nothing to do with regulations, okay? They didn't take any of the regulations out. But Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden will be all over the place saying, regulators, regulators, regulators. That's bullshit, okay? Then, of course, you get some of the mental morons over there that are like, oh, it's Putin's fault. Somebody please explain to me how Putin has any control over the uh, some bank in New York or some bank in California, okay? If you want to say it's Zelensky's fault, that I'll give you credit for because if you start putting pieces of the puzzle together, gee, we've given Zelensky hundreds of billions of dollars. What did that do? That caused inflation. What did that do? That caused the Fed to raise rates. What did that do? That caused all the bonds to that Silicon Valley Bank was holding as assets to tank, and that's what caused the problem. So, yeah. The reason for this, the true reason that all these banks have, or that these banks are going down, or you had tons of banks falling apart yesterday too. It's like a dozen of them got halted uh, in trading because of the volatility. Is only because of the aggressive Fed hiking of interest rates. The fastest in history, guys, to give you an idea. The Fed has got this so screwed up Okay, they, I mean, it's either save the dollar or save the banks. And they decided to go save the banks. Why? Now, let's think about this. Where are these banks? This is Silicon Valley Bank. What else is in Silicon Valley? Oh, I don't know. Maybe a whole bunch of liberals, okay, who happen to be big donors to Democrats. Warren Bobert put it really correct yesterday. If this was First Midland Oil and Gas Bank in Texas yesterday, do you think Biden would have been in there and Jan Janet Yellen would have been in there going, the hell with the limits on FDIC insurance, we're just going to save everybody? No, they wouldn't have done anything. What proof of that? 
please tell me how much federal money has gone into East Palestine, Ohio. Okay. They could care less about saving the people. They want to save their donors, and that's exactly what's going on with this. Now, what they're going to find out very quickly is this is way too little, way too late. Silicon Valley Bank had somewhere right around $200 billion in depositors that they that the Fed has said they're going to make whole, right? FDIC, the insurance company itself, only has $125 billion. Please explain to me how you're going to make $200 billion of people whole with $125 billion. I don't know. What are you going to write? More IOUs? Or are you going to print more money? Okay. Guess what? More inflation coming because of it. This, this is the whole thing. Now we're going to see the Fed num uh, the CPI numbers come out this morning. Maybe if I'm lucky, I'll actually have this video up before the, the numbers come out. Thanks, AT&T. Thanks, Scott County Telephone Company, my Wi-Fi provider. Uh, th this, is, this is what you got. CPI numbers come out today. They're expected to come in at 6%. Ooh, that's... The economy is great, 6% inflation, right? But what is this going to do? Well, this now ties Jerome Powell's hands. They wanted to raise rates another 50 basis points, a half a percent here later this month. Now there's talk about only 25, still raising rates, which still screws the banks, okay? Even worse, which screws the depositors. No matter what happens here, we're in trouble because as the banks continue to lose money, there was no magic wand yesterday and all the rest of the banks in the country are now safe, okay? Done. When this happens, when you see more bank closures, and I'm going to give you this, do you see all the relief? Oh, thank God, yesterday there were no there were no uh, bank, bank closures or the government take... The FDIC doesn't do that during the week. They don't like to do it in midweek, and they certainly don't want to do it on Monday. Tell me that on Friday this week, when they like to come in and close down banks, because there's less background noise that they have to deal with over the weekend. You know, go back in history and look when this happens. It happens on Fridays. Like I told you last week, bad things happen on Fridays. There's a reason for it, okay? They don't want all the other noise that's out there. They want to be able to try to get this done whatever, you know, like selling SVB Bank, which, of course, was a master, massive clusterfuck and got nowhere, and so we still have these problems. But what happens when the next one fails and you get a bank run and another bank run and another bank run and another bank run? The banks don't have the assets. I mean, they can sell. I mean, telling you again, because of the Fed raising rates, the values of all those bonds went down, okay? Now the banks have all these at a loss. Companies can't operate at a loss. That includes banks, okay? So when the bank had $200 billion worth of deposits, which they went out and bought stuff with, and now those $200 billion deposits are only worth $180 billion, they can't give you all your money back. So now it is... The first 90% of people in line got all their money back. The last 10%... They're the ones left holding the bag. Sorry, we ran out of money. We don't have any more assets. We don't have any anything. We're done. We're out. We're out of business. And that's when the FDIC has to come in and go, okay, those $20 billion, billion worth of assets, we'll pay them back. They have $125 billion. That covers six banks. How many are in your town? And we'll out.